Hi, my name is Mark Fontaine and welcome back to our brand new episode of the Service Design Show. Now, wouldn't it be great if instead of having to convince the stakeholders and clients around you of the business benefits that design brings, that these same clients and stakeholders would be lining up to work with you. That instead of having to work on small and incremental projects, you would be able to take on meaningful work that has a significant impact on the organization and its customers. Well, I hate to break it to you, but most business leaders don't get or really care about design. And when you consider that background, you can't blame them. They just speak a different language and have a different mindset. So a lot of service design professionals are struggling. They struggle to make themselves heard. They struggle to connect with key decision makers. They struggle to get the resources they need. This struggle is holding them back unnecessarily. And eventually they are missing out on opportunities to make a meaningful impact on the company and its customers. I said that a lot of service design professionals struggle, but not all of them. Because some have mastered the skill of telling a story that resonates with business leaders without losing the soul of design. Sure, once you know what you're doing, crafting this story isn't hard. But I'll admit, getting started with this story can be very challenging at first. So to give service design professionals a head start in building a clear and compelling story that resonates with business leaders, I've created a training program. The program is called Selling Service Design with Confidence, and it guides you through the entire process step by step so that the next time you find yourself in a conversation about the business impact of design, you'll know exactly what to say, when to say it, how to say it, and do it with confidence. In this episode, you'll hear the stories of six service design professionals who have been able to successfully complete the program. They share how they were able to overcome some of the biggest challenges they faced when trying to sell service design and which impact this has had on their careers. If you want to learn more about the program, head over to servicedesignshow.com slash confidence. There is a very limited number of seats available in the cohort. So if you want to increase your chance of securing a spot, make sure to send in your application sooner than later. For all the information and instructions on how to apply and the dates at which a new cohort starts, head over to servicedesignshow.com slash confidence and you'll also find the link in the show notes of this episode. I know that in our busy schedules, it's hard to find the time to invest in your professional growth. But if you want to break through that glass ceiling and take your career to the next level, this program is a great step that will help to get you there. But don't just take my word for it. Let's dive into the stories of the people who did. Let the show begin. Welcome to the show, graduates. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey. Hello. Awesome to see you all. Uh, uh, at the end of this eight-week journey, so proud of you. You've made it. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about what you've learned, what tips you can share, the challenges that you face, uh, faced, or maybe are even still facing. And we're going to hear your stories, a tiny bit of them. Uh, I'm really excited to jump into the conversation. Uh, we have six graduates here and we have to start somewhere. And I always like to sh say that uh, I'm going to take the airplane, but in this case, I could even take the uh, car because we're going to go off to Wroclaw. Kate, uh, you're up first. That's always one of the most exciting moments because you haven't seen anyone else give you an example of how to do this, but this is also your opportunity to fill it in as you'd like. Let's start off with the question to understand a bit more about your context. What do you do these days? Sure. So um, my current role is called Head of User Experience Design in an IT uh, software development company. And um, I have around 40 designers working together with me who are distributed globally. And we help clients uh, to come up with software solutions. And around 90% of our clients are located in the United States. And well, as you can imagine, there are 
several challenges that uh, I have during my work. So if I understand correctly, you're uh, surrounded and in a heavy UX and digital environment, right? Yeah, that's right. Not the easiest place for service designers in general. Um, you mm -hmm. mentioned already something about challenges. What did you experience as one of the biggest challenges with regards to selling service design? So the biggest challenge is that uh, the company that I've been working with for the past five years is um, engineering mostly. So clients come to us for engineering solutions and design is always something complementary with engineering service. So uh, it's always challenging to sell even UX and research um, because mostly all we need to do is to design the solution to pack it in a beautiful uh, package and uh, you know come up with some beautiful mockups and uh, easy to use experience. So the um, the most uh, like the biggest challenge that I have faced with is to sell at least research and to sell at least um, something beyond beautiful mockups that we need to do to um, to add value to what we're doing. And that's why um, that's why I'm here, and I'm, I'm I'm looking for ways to do it easily. So hopefully, uh, I will do because I have already um, found a lot of valuable insights in this course. And um, when you say that uh, sort of selling research and uh, design research was challenging, uh, and that design maybe was a little bit an afterthought or at least not the primary thought. What was the consequence of this? Well, like, um, how did this impact your work? Yeah, it, it always impacts uh, my work because uh, it oftentimes happens so that I, I'm in doubts about a certain solution and the client has already a strong vision and says that, well, I know that my competitors are doing this way and I don't need another uh, opinions. And then once the product is launched and it's in production and we see that I was right, so this is so uh, generally that's the impact which um, you know, this sort of neglection of um, my advice has on, on further work. Yeah, so uh, this is the classic example where not spending some time at the end uh, at the start of a project results in maybe adding a lot of additional time at yeah. the end. Yeah, um, makes makes sense. Now you've gone on a journey for eight weeks to learn more about how to sell the value of research, how to sell the value of service design. What's the most important learning that you took away? So uh, for me, the most important learning is um, debriefing. I actually was really surprised because it's so um, well self-evident. Uh, self uh, it's so obvious that it's, it, it's, it should be done, but I didn't realize that it can be done in this way, um, how you explained it. So um, I think that this is a must now for me for our projects, and it will help me not only to polish my stra my further strategy, but also to come up, come up with stories for my further uh, prospective clients. You yeah. mentioned debriefing. Yeah, debriefing. Yeah, can you explain a bit more about what that is? So debriefing, meaning that uh, after the project is finished, uh, I talk to my clients and ask them what problems I helped to solve and what were the strongest, like what was the strongest impact of, of the work that I did for them. And those insights will help me to build my story and to enrich my portfolio for further uh, talks with clients. Have you already been able to test this with some former clients? No, not yet, unfortunately. Well, during the course, we, we did this as an exercise and uh, it was very valuable, but I hope to do it further even more. And uh, well, after the next big project, I will definitely do it. If somebody is listening and also struggling with how do I, well, I'm in a heavily tech and engineering driven environment. There usually isn't a lot of appreciation for research. Which tip would you give them? First of all, don't give up. <laughs> there is a chance, I think. Um, also, look for um, the right points of contact. Because what I have learned is uh, mostly we work with engineers or VPs in, of engineering, and those are not the right people to sell <laughs> design or some extra design services. So it's very important to look for those points of contact who will understand you. 
and definitely work hard on, on um, shaping the strategy, shaping the language, and um, focusing on what they value uh, while you speak about what you're proposing. So if those aren't the people, the usual suspects, who would be the first person you would reach out to? Um, I think I would reach out to um, business people uh, like uh, CEOs of the company, maybe someone from marketing because they should understand value better than CTO maybe and the VP of engineering. Um, I even heard a recent, a recent term mentioned by one of the CTOs who I was talking to and trying to give some advice on, on the processes they have. He said, we are uh, a backend driven product. So it was very interesting to, mm. to learn. Mm. All right. Thank you for sharing. Uh, really curious how oh, your journey will evolve and uh, how the debrief sessions will go, because I absolutely do think that there is so much value there. Thanks, Kate. And we're going to move on to the next uh, graduate. Vinyata, are you there? Uh, hi, Mark. I'm here. Awesome. Good to see you. Uh, same question for you to start off with. Uh, could you share a bit more about your current role? Are you in-house? Are you on the agency side so that we have a little bit more context? Sure. Um, I'm uh, an in-house designer, so I work as a lead UX designer. Um, I've been working in softwares um, uh, for over 10 years now, um, mostly focusing on um, SaaS products. And um, uh, in the last four years, I've launched around three SaaS products. It's mostly um, end-to-end uh, uh, product design and launch. Also in a heavy tech and environment, uh, heavy tech driven environment, engineering driven environment, that's maybe becoming a theme here. Um, so uh, did you recognize the ch same challenges Kate was sharing or were you running into some other challenges? Most definitely uh, everything um, Kate was saying um, made total sense to me because I go through most of the things in my uh, in my work situation as well. Um, uh, but my challenges are more uh, in terms of uh, when you're trying to drive to a launch, there's a certain time um, becomes a huge factor that determines the scope of the product and the kind of user research that you can incorporate into the product life cycle um, uh, at various points become a question, um, uh, becomes questionable. And, you know, it's it's constantly my challenge is to constantly drive and uh, vouch for that and to uh, keep pushing for that. In it. Uh, and that's that's one of the challenges that I face. So you're part of a, of a train that's moving. Uh, it's, it has left the station. <laughs> yeah. And then how do we uh, still keep the customer or user perspective throughout the timeline is that what you're saying exactly exactly mm. to mm. bring all stakeholders to think about so uh, just have that conversation about how this product is going to impact and can we test that as as much as we can through the product life cycle to bring those insights back into the product and iterate as we go ahead so have those conversations and have those practices because it's so easy when you're trying to you know run at a particular time for launch to just Put certain things under the carpet and just just try to implement what's planned for without mm. really testing. Yeah, um, and then sort of at the it's better to save time uh, at the start, uh, although it feels that way than to uh, run over schedule. Um, makes sense. Uh, also, I'm curious to your learnings uh, now that you've completed the program. What's your biggest takeaway so far? So it's it's again. Uh, 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 inherent to the kind of work that I've been exposed to. So it is usually I'm, I'm, I'm into a, uh, I'm, I start a project, the project is running already, and I've, I'm just embarked in the project and everybody's waiting for design. So uh, it, it is me trying to give them what they want, but also trying to slow the process uh, and trying to do all the UX kind of work in, in the given context. So, so the project, uh, to, the, uh, to the training that I've had with you, Mark, what I've lately been practicing, the, even the, in the last four weeks, at, uh, eight weeks that we've been working together, is to bring those con to just actually pause the project at, uh, as much as I can and have those conversations with business leaders, and bring uh, um, uh, and lead conversations that talk about what's the value that we're going to bring to the business, what value are we going to bring. So just draw those insights and work together. I've, had, I've conducted two workshops in between, to just so that everybody together put their head together and understand what's the value that you're going to bring. 
bring to the customer, what values it's going to bring to the business, and hopefully, you know, co-create something uh, and uh, uh, get the buy-in for more time and more research as well. How would this compare to your previous approach? How did you do this before going through the program? Uh, I think it's uh, uh, what has helped me is having that uh, a framework for the kind of conversation. I, I think I used to have the intention uh, for such conversations, and but I didn't really know how exactly to frame these conversations and make sure what exactly is to be uh, what exactly to be touched upon when we have these conversations. I think uh, I, right now I have a better framework of uh, you know how to approach these conversations and what uh, to drive insights on what should be our. Um, uh, how do we how do we define success for this project? How would we calculate the return of investment for this project? So have those conversations where people are, you know, uh, uh, just broadening their vision basically and looking at the projects, not just about just the project, but looking at the overarching experience and all the touch points the user have throughout the service. It, it was always because because if you're working on a software as a service, you're looking at the larger picture. It's not just the, just the product. It's it is looking at the service, but. Um, uh, 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 to bring the business stakeholders also to at a point where you're, we're all looking at it together. I think that's something I'm achieving more recently than before. And the, that was my next question. What's been the response now? Because when you say, I'm trying to slow down a project, that doesn't seem like people would get excited immediately. <laughs> what What kind of response did you get? Uh, mix it, I would say, but uh, there I I think the uh, it is the marketing team and the uh, uh, the most senior level executives who um, who kind of are uh, more open to the conversations that I'm having, but I'm still having challenges with the delivery team and the delivery lead. And uh, so it is it is a kind of balance. So uh, again, I've been able to draw some um, uh, insights from the program where you talk about how we can uh, work within the constraints and look at the objections and, you know, work within the constraints. So I try to, I, I, I try to tell myself, maybe it's not everything that I can do at this point of time, but in the given context of time, what can I do? So I try to uh, go back and forth and uh, push as much as I can. Mm. And if I'm hearing you correctly, you now have at least some questions that you feel are relevant and you know why you're asking them and, you know, who to ask. And that gives like more space to actually, actually do these conversations. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, also, like if you could end uh, with it a tip, like your ultimate tip for somebody who also wants to get better at selling service design, what would it be? Um, uh, for me, it is to follow your gut. Uh, if you feel that something is not right, probably there's, it is something is not right. So you need to investigate um, uh, also to reflect upon any conversation that you've had or the work that you've been doing, take time out to reflect. I think that's something I learned from the program too. Reflection is so important for us in design process. So take time to reflect and also if this, uh, follow your gut. And that's why we're also here to reflect, to pause, to think back and not run into the next course training program or whatever, but capture a moment in time. Thank you, Vinyada. Uh, thank you for sharing. And uh, we're going to move on to our next graduate avi all the way from italy we're staying a little bit in europe today are you here with us yes yes hi all everybody um the first thing that we're always curious about is a bit of context uh, we've heard somebody who is in-house what is your current situation my current situation i just recently finished a project i've been working I I did my service design master like four years ago, and since then I've been working more in a like social innovation um, research project, action research project. So I've been working with um, universities, organizing workshops that trying to open dialogue with uh, communities. And then um, my recent projects always in this user research uh, phase, where mostly I. I was responsible in um, engaging with client, interviewing clients and doing like observation of their current system. So I've been struggling with, um, after finishing that project, I've been struggling like finding a new job or a new roles where I can um, sell service design in another situation because this kind of area, community engagement, stakeholder engagement are kind of very niche. Uh, a lot of service design 
agency that I know in Italy, mostly they work with digital products. So uh, one of the reasons why I'm trying to uh, take this course is to understand like how can I sell service design for other kind of services because it's not immediate that uh, like normal clients or maybe like someone who has a little business or try to do something, they mostly, if they come to me, they think I do marketing and they think I do social media. And for me, it's like, okay, I, I understand that service design is not someone it's not like the term that people try to buy from like a, a service provider, like, okay, I want to do service design for my project. So I'm trying to understand like how can service design fit in larger context than like uh, digital product companies. It's, it's been difficult. What's interesting is, uh, again, Kate is uh, on the agency side, Niara is in-house, you're basically independent and uh having a completely different conversations with potential clients and how you position yourself. When you say it's been difficult, what's the thing that you experience as most difficult? Well, I think, I mean, I'm in, independent, but I always work for a project. So I never really sell. I have never really been involved in the creating the brief. It's uh, also like the, the missing part that, you know, like when I have the brief, it's, it's already there. So maybe if I have to organize a, uh, facilitate the workshop there's already a brief of there's like a user research there's already a brief so I've never been involved in in that the briefing part of why the client want to do this and seeing the trend like I think um, um, this kind of uh, user research in is very like anthropologic uh, approach it's not very it doesn't really sell very easily for like a profit, like for profit uh, activities. Um, like I work for a university project financed by the government, so it's not a uh, a for profit uh, um, project. Mm. Um, so yeah, so maybe I think uh, it's I don't know. I mean, it's uh, maybe it's not really. Maybe it hasn't really gained traction like this, uh, this, this road, like this, this kind of branch. Like I don't know. I mean, it's still something that. Yeah, I'm curious now. Uh, listening to your context, your situation, comp- again, completely different than the two other uh, professionals. What did you take away from uh, learning how to sell service design? Because you're probably listening uh, to this and doing the exercises and assignments from a completely different s- starting point. So I'm really curious, what was your takeaway? Well, I think for me, um, one of the most important takeaway that I feel is really like um, familiarize myself with business terms and business point of view. Uh, because that's the kind of like missing thing when you work in like um, kind of hybrid academic uh, project. They're like not so much that kind of need. So um, I think it's very important. I mean, for me, the more I see service design, I see it more as a part of like business strategy rather than um, like uh, the the interface, uh, in my opinion. So I think it's very important to familiarize with the like, business business approach and understand of what is important in, in business world. And I would like to have more. Uh, exposure to talk to potential client. Like I've been trying to do that, like going to events and trying to um, tell people that I do service design. Like even recently um, there's like some digital week in, in Turin. And when I say that, oh, I'm service designer, it's not so many people know what is service design. Um, even though, you know, like you're in this like digital like week, there are people that talk about service design, but they, at the end, they don't really call it service design. So I think that's also an interesting thing that I learned from your uh, course is that the, the service design name, it's uh, not really, I mean, the, the most uh, easier name to, to open people attraction. So I think that's the most interesting for me is to learn uh, the business terminology and then um, trying to understand how do people, what, 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 what are the business priority and their goals uh, for me to able to be able to craft what kind of services that I can offer and uh, and eventually seeing service design as a tools rather than like the service itself. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's clear, like that's kind of the, um, the word, I mean, the kind of like conceptual map that I'm trying to do, like what would be the top and the service design is like a tools that kind of 
help you to arrive to that. Yes, it's a means to an end. And I think it's always really important to keep reminding ourselves of that. It's a really nice means to an end, but in the end, it's all about the outcome and the results and the impact that we want to create. Um, so learning more about business, learning more about strategy, which tip would you give to somebody who is in a similar position as you are and also maybe facing the same struggles? What would you tell them? Well, I think that the, the, I agree with Kate, the briefing, the briefing is very important part. Uh, unfortunately, I also rarely have that occasion. Like sometimes I did have uh, feedback after the, after, but I, um, having like a f- kind of more formalized debriefing as part of the, the uh, like uh, wrapping up a project, I think it's a very important thing. And then the other thing would be, I would, um, I would say, uh, in my position would be like trying to be more flexible with the with the with the process with the methods um and yeah being able to face it yeah how how would you be more flexible compared to what you were doing before maybe uh how to be more flexible um i think it's important to be flexible in a sense that when the resources are limited uh, if you're, I mean, if you're client or whatever, like my stakeholder, my p- people that I have to, to offer this service design, um, work, if they have limited time, there are a lot of work that, I mean, if I want to follow the methods that it's can't, can't be, uh, can't really, it's not really feasible. So I think being flexible and kind of thinking more about, um, even if you're, service design approach that I can bring to them it's already make a big difference right? um, so yeah that's be like my 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 two um my two tips for people be flexible and not sticking to rigidly to the method and like trying to do debrief understand like your client language and what's important for them thank you thank you Avi very important good tips to remember uh thanks for sharing thank you Let's move on to uh, Finland in this case. And uh, Anu, are you here with us? Hello, Mark. Hello, I'm here. Anu. <laughs> I'm Very happy good. to be here also. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that you are here. So uh, we've now heard three different scenarios. Somebody at an agency, somebody in-house, somebody sort of independent freelancing. Uh, what is your role and situation at the moment? I actually originally wanted to take this course because I was between jobs. I had finished in the old one and I, I knew that I would be starting in the new one. And also in my previous job, I actually didn't work with service design for a year because I, I was doing something else. I was scrum master in a design system team. So it was really good to sort of catch up with all these sort of service design things before starting the new job. And now, now I've been there a couple of weeks. So, so this has been perfect timing in many ways. Hmm. And my current job is in-house job again. <laughs> my jobs ha- have been always in in-house jobs. And I'm also the only service designer in the company. And I'm also the first service designer ever in the company. <laughs> so there's many new things for the company and partly also for me. Nice, nice. Uh, sort of greenfield. You can influence a lot of things. Uh, you have no heritage uh, with regards to service design that you have to uh, keep... Uh, in mind awesome now you mentioned that you i remember that moment to be honest uh you signed up uh for the program in between jobs um i don't recall that you actually had a challenge selling service design i think you said something like i'm just interested in what this is like what made you sign up maybe that's my question here yeah i I like like i said partly that i i sort of wanted to update my skills in service design but i i also saw that Maybe selling service design is very important, especially in this context that I, I am in, because I am being the first service designer in a company. So I would would like to sort of be an ambassador of service design in a very good way. And I, I think this is something I actually got from this course also. And I mean, I, I also think that I, I have to convince them that, that my job is important and my role is important and I can provide something new. And yeah. that's also part of the job. So, so, and then I wanted to network with all these people <laughs> <laughs> who are in the same course. So, so that was yeah. the one, one motivation here as well. Yeah. And that's a really nice way to put it, like being the ambassador 
And uh, even though you're in-house, it doesn't mean that you don't have to sell. I think people who are in-house actually probably have to do a lot more selling to their colleagues, to all the stakeholders. There are just a lot more people around you who aren't already bought into service design. Interesting, being the ambassador. Um, what would you say was the biggest challenge in selling it? Have you already experienced a challenge in, in convincing people or is it easy going? Uh, I think at the moment I'm sort of working to get the people see how they think because in, many people in the companies, they think from inside and they, they think about the processes and all the systems they have at the back, back end. But actually they should be thinking more about the customers and how the customers feel and how do we make their life as simple as possible for the customers. So, so that's what I'm working on at the, at the moment. That I want to uh, sort of switch the focus of my colleagues to the customer who is outside the company, not the inside. So, so that's may, maybe my first challenge, what I'm working on. Yeah, how do you shift the perspective on inside, what is it, outside in, inside out? <laughs> that's I always confuse these two things. There is a very good book uh, on that. Now, um, did you find anything inside the program that helped you in this journey to shift this mindset? Possibly there has been many things. I, I, I was sort of thinking about this, and what would I say? Because I, I really feel that somehow, somehow maybe I don't quite see yet what I've learned on this course. I, I think it might take some time before I realize what, what things I really have learned during the course. But uh, at least I, I've learned a lot about the communication, that communication is very important, that you don't use a jargon and you, you really can explain you can simplify service design and, and compare it to the, to the other other kinds of businesses. So that's really important, at least. And that's that's what I feel that I learned here, at least. I mean, I learned many other things as well, but I mean, that's something I, I feel that I can use in my work as well, that have these analogies of, of other businesses or other, other sort of traits. So that's something. Yeah. How does service design fit in, right? How does yeah. it relate to things? Yeah. People are already familiar with and comfortable with, and then using that as a starting point to yeah. have the conversation, correct? Yeah, exactly. What's um, what's the one tip that you would give somebody who's listening to this and in a similar situation? Uh, I mean, there's many things I, I, I would say also, like I just do it and keep on explaining and repeat it. That's something. But also I, I, I want to mention when we saw Niam Parsley from Spotify, when she said, show, don't tell, I just feel that that's so val valuable advice and I, I want to pass it on because I just feel that showing what service designer is doing and how the service design is done and what kind of methods you use instead of telling, I think that's really important lesson I learned. All right. Can you give, what is, how do you try to implement this? How do you try to show service design? I, I actually already had started doing it in a similar way that Niamh told us. So I have been also using a MyRoport to collect my own thoughts. Like I, I've been collecting customer journeys and customer insights, what, what I've found in the company. And always when I learn something new, I collect the information on the, on the MyRoport. But what I've learned from Niamh, I, I decided that I actually share my MyRoport, even, even it's not finalized and it was originally only meant for me. I actually have, have already shared it with my colleagues and they are allowed to also sort of fill in the information which is missing or if I've understood something wrong. And I just feel that that's like best cooperation there is, that everybody can can sort of utilize the same board and fill in the information. And we have all, everything visible, transparent for all of us. Yeah. So, yeah. so I'm really grateful for that advice. I, I just feel that that was the greatest thing I actually learned on, on this whole course. So sorry, it wasn't from you, Mark. <laughs> But well, you made it possible to learn that. <laughs> I, I'm happy. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't have to come from me. Certainly not. And uh, yeah, involving people, making the process transparent, uh, showing how you're thinking, involving people. That's yeah, in general, a very good idea. Also, Manu, I'm really looking forward to how your ambassadorship will evolve over the coming months uh, in this new role. Uh, thanks for sharing. Thank you. Let's move on to our next graduate. We're finally moving away from Europe and we're going to go into Dubai. Jane, are you with us? Hi, Mark. Thanks hey. for having me. Uh, it's a real pleasure. Um, as always, 
we like to start off with the question to understand a bit more about your context. And it's also a special one. So please enlighten us. Uh, definitely. So a little bit about my background. Uh, I'm the service design lead in one of the largest bank uh, in the UAE region. Um, so our practice is still new. As we are practicing it, we're also establishing service design. Um, so I guess, shall we kick off the first question? Yeah. So uh, a bank um, in the UAE, um, and you've recently started this role. So I can imagine a lot of new things, new culture, different environment, uh, service design is new. There must be tons of challenges, but um, if you had to pick one, what do you feel was, would be the, the, oh, the biggest challenge that you'd like to share? Yeah, um, I think from, uh, you could say as a challenge, you could also say as one of my goals is um, advocacy of service design. So bring the awareness to the team, internal team members, as well as other teams, such as like product, business side. Um, I think the challenge for uh, overall is uh, how do people understand what service design is? Do they actually know the value of it? So um, what I've learned from the course is that um, speak in the language of your clients and then bring alignment. So when they mention about business out outcomes, what does it mean from a customer expectations and journey perspective, right? Um, and so that's one thing. A second thing is that, you know, one of the um, case studies or uh, activity you mentioned about identify the cost drivers and the growth drivers, right? So I think that's something I've, I haven't heard learned that uh, before so that really paints the bigger picture from a strategy perspective so i felt um i can implement that into my part of you know selling service design which helps them to understand we are in this together but i'm more helping you to understand from a customer perspective yeah that's such an important thing or again to mention that uh learning the language of well in this case maybe also a different country but from other disciplines like business, like strategy, like what are the things that are going through their mind rather than inviting them into our world and then hoping that they will get interested in service design. Hmm. Let's start with understanding their world and then trying to find the connections with service design from there, right? Yeah, definitely. I think um, scheduling my first session with the stakeholders to really understand their intents, elaborate on the context can already bring in some alignment in that uh, first step. You mentioned uh, something about cost drivers and growth drivers. Uh, what are they and how are they helping you? Yeah, so um, I remember in one of the graphs you propose is uh, see services as an investment um, more than a cost. So visualize that while talking to the stakeholders are going to be really important. Now, in terms of the example, it would be a sustainable strategy that can go long term. Um, or how can we make sure that customers will be a, you know, do repetitive transactions rather than a, uh, a angry customer who will never uh, use our services again. So these are the real examples that are um, that will bring resonance for both sides, right? Yeah, yeah, and making that tangible because it's really easy to see the investment required in a service design project in terms of time, in terms of money, in terms of manpower, but we rarely spend enough time to actually figure out, okay, what's on the other side of the equation? If we invest this, what's coming out at the end? And I think like what you're mentioning, taking the time, to figure this out, to add some numbers, uh, to have at least a conversation of what should be on the other side is so helpful. Yes, and then that's also one of the uh, lessons I've learned is uh, tell the story with stats. So having some numbers indicated um, uh, will also have more, let's say, buy-ins or helping customers, with, I mean, stakeholders understand the value of it. Also, question to you, um, maybe if we rephrase it just for the fun of it, like, What's the one tip you wish you would have gotten maybe from somebody else who has done the program before? Like, what's the one thing you wish somebody had told you? Um, I would 
relate to what our guest speaker mentioned about just get started. Um, I find you know there are lots of links and resources online, scattered resources, and uh, if you keep digging up, of course you're going to have a whole pile of resources, right? But at the end of the day, you have to get started to show, let them feel feel the power of service design, just like Anu mentioned, um, and then make sure the work is engaging so that uh, it's not only about A versus B, it's more like collaborating co-creation. And do you feel that uh, it took you too long to get started? Were you looking into too many resources? I find, uh, I mean, scheduling workshop is all right. It does not lead to, um, let's say, that has a lot of preparation work. But in terms of, let's say, listing everything on a website to show the value of it, I've, maybe I'm toward a perfectionist that way. But I find at least visualizing the roadmap and uh, even in a, let's say, draft 2.0 version should be good enough to start with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the saying is create a shitty first draft and then just just start. And like also Anno said, it's great that it's not perfect. Like show the rough, messy versions because that invites people in, right? They can collaborate and help you along the road. Jane, thank you also for sharing. Interesting to hear all these different perspectives, people, different companies, different areas, different cultures. Uh, thank you for sharing. And we're going to go to our final destination today. Uh, Christina, all the way from, tell us, where Australia. are you? Australia. <laughs> Australia. Which part of Australia? Because it's a big country. Okay, so I'm on the west coast, um, all the way down the bottom. So it's very, very far from um, the big cities. Uh, I I'm working for a local government. So I'm working in the public sector um, in a very beautiful part of the world, very um, tourist kind of draw card. A uh, wine region that's famous for surfing and hiking in nature. Um, and with that comes a lot of challenges. Um, yeah, as, yeah. A, as a government, <laughs> providing lots of services and infrastructure for people to enjoy. So uh, you're in a beautiful part of Australia. You're working in the public sector um, as a service design professional. Or uh, what is your title? Yeah, sure. So my title is Customer Experience Coordinator. So it's, it's a new role at the organization and I look after the customer services front, you know, frontline team, uh, the communications team and the community engagement team of the organization. So yeah, definitely service design is not a word that many people even know about in the organization. So you know, that was like number one tip that I got from your course. <laughs> <laughs> what was the number one tip? Yeah. <laughs> Don't sell don't solve service design by talking about service design, uh, you know, and the methods and, and, you know, someone's mentioned the jargon because people just switch off. You need to try and like, um, you know, understand who the audience is, who are you talking to and what's their world like, you know, which area of the business are they working in? And then try and like use an example of things that they're doing, a process that they've got or something that they deliver, the service that they deliver. And then um, kind of give an example of how, you can improve that. And I guess, you know, then you go, well, that's what service design is. You know, so don't, don't lead in with, oh, service design. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you what that is. <laughs> that is, that is tip one. And um, what drew you to this program? Like, uh, this is about learning how to sell service design. Were you experiencing any challenges related to this? Or again, what brought you here? Um, I kind of like... I guess I have a big focus on human-centered design practices. So, um, you know, UX design, customer experience design, and of course, like service design is a critical component that of, of that whole practice. Um, and I guess like I've had experience now on more the UX side of things. Um, and then in this role, like, I guess it was very obvious that you can't, you can't improve customer experience without looking at the services that sit behind because that, that's what drives the customer experience. So you really need to be able to um, understand what the back-end processes are, the, the people and the structures that you've got of teams, um, the culture that's going on in the back-end um, because that all impacts on then the front-end experience that your customers are going to have. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of, I need to be involved in this if I'm going to be successful in my role. 
in the customer experience domain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And was that a what is was that a struggle? Was that a tough conversation? Was there like I think um so we've talked about how people love the idea of um show don't do what was it do yeah. <laughs> show don't tell yeah <laughs> show don't tell <laughs> um and so yeah i was lucky enough to work i led like a um a redesign of a web web project so the corporate website um and i wanted to take you know human centered design um approach to that so it was a really great case study to just show the whole organization um they were you know we we worked through the project with everybody in the organization and customers at various different touch points in the project. Um, and I think, you know, it was a year long project and so many different people were involved. They got to see the end result and we got to explain what we we're doing as part of the process. Um, and they were really happy with that. So now um, some of the other projects that I'm working on, like putting together customer experience strategy, taking a similar approach um people are like oh yeah okay i remember you kind of did this approach with the website oh yeah you went and interviewed a whole lot of customers to ask them xyz oh yeah you met with all of us you know the 19 different areas of the business to ask questions about what com common challenges were and where we see the opportunities and kind of see where you're going with this so yeah getting um a project under your belt like a, a win is like a really good way to show people the value yeah yeah, absolutely. And when you get the opportunity, that's golden. And especially if you are able to uh, take it from start to end and have something tangible to show. Um, from this context, uh, what was your biggest learning, biggest lesson, biggest takeaway from everything that we've discussed over the last eight weeks? Um, well, I, I kind of led in with it about don't talk about service design methods and jargon, but I think... Um, I really liked the like creating a business case using some of the math examples. So I think definitely in the public sector, and I think Afi talked about this, um, it's less driven by our profit because you know you're a government, so a lot of the stuff that you do is not for profit. Um, but you can definitely use um, examples to show, you know, you kind of speak to the things that the business um, cares about that they. Or, or some of the challenges that they got, for example, they're very limited with resourcing. So if you can kind of um, give math examples for how, hey, this process is super inefficient and that equals, um, you know, resources, X amount of resources or people or time um, that you're spending to, to deliver the service. And hey, if we went around and we looked at better ways to do this, you could potentially save, I don't know, 20 hours of people's time a day um, that's the kind of thing that really speaks to the sector. Yeah. So um, I really, that's a good takeaway, like using those maths examples to kind of support the business case. It's funny that we can just uh, prototype with numbers. Uh, we don't have mm -hmm. to have a degree in math or we don't have to have a degree in economics to still make a compelling argument and and just, uh, yeah, to add some numbers to the, the value of the work that we're doing. Um, and then let's close off with uh, your final tip because this was your biggest lesson or takeaway to apply some math to service design. Is that also your tip or do you have something else to share? Um, I think don't give up because <laughs> <laughs> it's it can be really, it can be a kind of lonely road sometimes, especially if, you know, your organization, if you're in-house, let's say, I guess it's also for um, um, people that are in agencies. You've got varying levels of um, maturity. Um, so I'm working in an organization that's really at the beginning of their journey in terms of becoming more community or customer centric. So it's like, it's it's a kind of drum that you're constantly feeling like you've got to beat, but you are starting, you know, when you start to get a few little followers, <laughs> it starts to make it um, easier. Uh, and people that, you know, projects that you've done with other areas of the business um, that have kind of seen the value of what you're doing, and then they start to be your advocates. And um, that's when you start to get a bit more momentum. I've kind of like maybe got a couple of those people at the moment, but working on projects to hope, you know, have case studies that I can show other areas of the organization and get some more momentum and investment yeah. in the business area. Yeah. yeah. Don't give up find support, find the community. Don't try to um, go on this journey alone. There are more people like you who are passionate about this. Really, there are. So I second your uh, suggestion. Don't give up. Um, 
thanks, Christina. Thanks for sharing. This uh, brings us back to uh, the closing moments because uh, our journey, official journey, ends here. Uh, but I'm sure that we'll have our conversations somewhere else down the line. Uh, one final time, I want to thank you for completing this, for investing in yourself to becoming a better, more well-rounded professional. Well done. And uh, I'm sure our conversations will continue somewhere else. Thank you. How to clearly communicate the benefits of our work is a topic that we need to keep addressing in the service design space. Once again, I want to thank these six service design professionals for coming on the show and sharing their stories with us. As you've made it this far into the episode, I'm quite sure that you also see the tremendous value of being able to communicate the value of service design to business leaders who don't necessarily have a design background. And the great thing is that mastering this skill isn't hard. You just need to know what the right steps are and take them in the correct order. If you want my guidance on that journey, the Selling Service Design with Confidence program is exactly the place where you need to be. At the time of the recording, there's one more cohort scheduled for 2023. And depending on when you're listening to this, you might still be able to benefit from the early bird discount. For all the instructions on how to apply, head over to servicedesignshow.com slash confidence. As we have a limited number of seats available in the program, there is an application process. So head over to servicedesignshow.com slash confidence for all the details and instructions on how to send in your application. My name is Mark Fontaine, and I want to thank you for being part of this community. Keep making a positive impact. I'll catch you very soon in a brand new episode of The Service Design Show. See you then.